Hello everyone, welcome to Naz Villa. Here are the figures of speech of poem number 4, A Thing of Beauty, written by John Keats. If you want to see the explanation of this poem, you can see the explanation video on the channel. You will find the link in the description box. So without wasting any further time, let's begin. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. The first figure of speech in this is epigram. Epigram is a sharp pointed statement. Ek smart a statement hota hai. This is also a sharp pointed statement that beautiful things bring joy forever. So it is epigram. The next figure of speech in this is paradox. In paradox, the statement seems to be false. Aisa lagta hai sentence false hai. Lekin if you look closely, there is a hidden meaning behind the statement. Here also a thing of beauty is a joy forever. It looks like a false statement. But if you see closely, so it makes sense. That beautiful things will bring joy to our life. The next figure of speech in the same sentence is hyperbole. There is a over exaggeration over statement that it is like khubsurat cheez hamesha ke liye joyful rehti hai. So it is something like that. Tino statement related figure of speech jo apply ho rahe hai isme. Second one, its loveliness increases, it will never pass into nothingness. The first figure of speech in this sentence is lead towards very clearly. You can see never pass into nothingness, use of negative word and it is obviously supporting something positive. The second figure of speech in this is antithesis. Why antithesis? Because so here pe two words hai. they are showing two opposite meaning in the sentence and they both are conveying two opposite thoughts in the sentence and thus it is antithesis. You can also find alliteration here. Sound of the consonant is repeated. N is repeated twice in the sentence. Third one. A bower quiet for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing. So the first figure of speech in this is climax because there are list of things mentioned here and they are going in ascending order. So that's why climax. Climax is something which is rarely being used in your syllabus but here it is. Remember the climax in this one. The second figure of speech is oxymoron because at the very last you can see here first it is, it is written quiet and then beside that it is written breathing so you have to be quiet and you have to breathe so they are placed together two words conveying opposite meanings are placed together to give a combined thought to the sentence so that is why oxymoron the next figure of speech in this is metaphor because you can see here a bower quite for us bower means a shady place so obviously a thing of beauty has been compared with a shady place a shelter a cool place, a shelter, usse compare kya gaya hai, beautiful thing ko. And the words of comparison are not used, it's a hidden comparison, that is what is metaphor. Then you can see here repetition very clearly, quite quite is repeated two times in the sentence. And the next one is alliteration because you can see B is repeated in bower and breathing. Fourth one, therefore on every morrow are we withering a flowery band to bind us to the earth. The first figure of speech you will find here is alliteration because the sound of the consonant B is repeated. B bar bar repeat ho raha hai sentence mein. The next figure of speech in this is metaphor. You will see yahan pe flowery band ka gaya hai thing of beauty ko. Again you will see there is a hidden comparison here without using the word of comparison. So that is why metaphor. The next figure of speech is anostroph. Anostroph ko inversion bhi kaha jata hai isme sentence ki placement ko rearrange kar diya jata hai so you will see here are we weathering a flowery band so are we ki jagah pe aata hai we are weathering a flowery band lekin words ko unki jagah se hata kar rearrange kar diya gaya and that is why it is anostroph fifth one of noble natures of gloomy days the first figure of speech in this is transferred epithet you will see here gloomy days so the feeling of being gloomy has been transferred from a person to the days. So a person is feeling gloomy, days are not gloomy and that is why it is called transfer epithet. The next figure of speech here is alliteration because sound of the consonant N is repeated. N noble or nature may repeat ho raha hai. The next figure of speech is personification because the nature ko noble kaha gaya hai. Noble, being noble is a human characteristic a human quality which has been given to the nature again you will see on gloomy days ka gaya. gloomy is also human quality 
that has been given to the days so personification the next figure of speech here is repetition because of is repeated twice in the sentence for poetic effect so repetition a uh, sixth one of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways made for our searching the first figure of speech is tautology unhealthy and over darkened ways both these words are conveying the same meaning unnecessarily both the words are used in the sentence to give more emphasis to them and that is why tautology words having similar meaning used in the same sentence the next figure of speech here is transferred epithet unhealthy or over darkened kon hai person hai lekin in quality ko transfer kar diya gaya to their ways and that is why it is transferred epithet seventh one in spite of all some shape of beauty moves away the pall from our dark spirit there are so many figure of speech in this one the first figure of speech here is personification because yahan pe beauty ko human quality ki di gayi hai to pall ko remove karna yani darkness ko remove karne ki quality di gayi hai the next figure of speech in this is antithesis because there are two opposite words that is beauty and pall yani ke darkness ya dullness ke jise kaha jata hai are used in the same sentence and they are conveying two opposite thoughts opposite words conveying opposite thoughts so antithesis the next figure of speech here is metonymy there is a change of name instead of directly mentioning beautiful things yahan pe likha gaya hai some shape of beauty so you know the whole poem is written on beautiful things lekin fir bhi yahan pe ek change of name kiya gaya hai and that is what is metonymy the next figure of speech is internal rhyme because all and paul are rhyming and are used in the same sentence so internal rhyme the last figure of speech in this one is transferred epithet the darkness jo hai wo human se transfer kar diya gaya hai unki spirit ke upar is a transfer of adjective and that is what is transferred epithet the figure of speech in this poem are very hard to identify you can also find alliteration in this one the first alphabet is repeated try to find out which one eighth one such the sun the moon trees old and young sprouting a shady boom for simple ship the first figure of speech in this is antithesis old and young two opposite words having showing two opposite thought in the sentence the next figure of speech here is metaphor because yahan pe simple ship kaha gaya hai so simple ship kaun hai humans hai there is a comparison a hidden comparison without using words of comparison that is why metaphor the next figure of speech is alliteration the sound of the consonant sh is repeated sh is repeated in shady and ship also s is repeated so alliteration ninth one and such are daffodils with the green world they live in daffodils flower ka naam hai yahan pe metonymy स्पेसिफिकली यूज हो रहा है बिकॉज ग्रीन वर्ल्ड कहा गया है किस को नेचर को तो डायरेक्टली नेचर या फॉरेस्ट कहने के बजे यहाँ पे ग्रीन वर्ल्ड कहा गया है सो मेटोनमी टेंथ वन एंड क्लियर रिल्स दैट फॉर देम सेल्स आर कूलिंग कोवर्ड मेक फर्स्ट वन इज वेरी क्लियरली एलिट्रेशन बिकॉज साउंड ऑफ द कॉन्सिडेंसी इज रिपीटेड कूलिंग कोवर्ड क्लियर ओके अगेन टी एच इज ऑल्सो रिपीटेड योर एंड द नेक्स्ट फिगर ऑफ स्पीच इज एनोस्ट्रॉफ और इन्वर्जन भी कहते हैं जिसे सी योर दैट मेक अ कूलिंग कोवर्ड फॉर देम सेल्स ऐसा आएगा लेकिन यहाँ पे वर्ड्स को रीअरेंज कर दिया गया है फॉर पोएटिक इफेक्ट इलेवेंथ वन आफ्टर दिस आई थिंक ऑल द फिगर्स ऑफ स्पीच आर वेरी इजी अगेंस्ट द हॉट सीजन द मिड फॉरेस्ट ब्रेक रिच विद स्पार्कलिंग ऑफ फेयर मिस रोज ब्लूम वेरी इजिली यू कैन फाइंड आउट देर इज ओनली वन फिगर ऑफ स्पीच इन दिस दैट इज एलिट्रेशन बी इज रिपीटेड एम इज रिपीटेड एफ इज रिपीटेड सो एलिट्रेशन ट्वेल्थ वन and such to is the grandeur of the dooms we have imagined for the mighty death so the first one is irony because jo use kiya gaya hai wo actually use kiya gaya hai iska pura ek opposite scenario batane ke liye the poem is about thing of beauty yahan pe grandeur of the dooms and mighty death ki baat ki gayi hai so it just shows a totally opposite image to express a thing of beauty the next figure of speech is paradox paradox because the sentence seems to be very false that अगर इसे गौर से देखा जाए तो ये कहीं ना कहीं सही है कि इवन दो पीपल डाई उसके बावजूद भी उनकी जो उनकी ग्लोरी हमेशा बनी रहती है सो दैट इज वाई पैराडो थर्टींथ वन ऑल द लवली टेल्स दैट वी हैव हर्ड और रेड एन एंडलेस फाउंटेन ऑफ ए मॉटल ड्रिंक यू विल सी हियर देर इज अ स्लाइटेस्ट यूज ऑफ एंटी दस इज इन दिस लाइन हर्ड एंड रीड दीज आर टू ऑपोजिट थिंग्स 
which are used in the same sentence showing two opposite thoughts so that is why antithesis the next one is tautology because endless and immortal dono ka matlab same hota hai so words having same meaning are used in a sentence so tautology the next one is metaphor because you will see the lovely tales yani ki jo lovely stories hoti hain unko compare kiya gaya hai ek uh, immortal drink se so there is a, a hidden comparison being done without using the words of comparison so that is why it is metaphor the next one is alliteration because you can see h is repeated have and heard the last one that is 14th one an endless fountain of immortal drink pouring unto us from the heavens brink so the first figure of speech here is hyperbole ek over exaggerated statement hai immortal drink yani ki endless drink hai jo heaven ke corner se beh raha hai so you know it is a big of overstatement exaggeration of the se- sentence that is why hyperbole the next one is tautology again you will see immortal and endless again being repeated in this ye 13th one mein bhi humne dekha tha aur ye same words aur same sentence hai फिर यहाँ पर भी वो आ जाता है नेक्स्ट इज मेटोनमी हेवन ब्रिंक यानी कि हेवन के कॉर्नर से या हेवन के कोई एज से बट देर इज अ चेंज ऑफ नेम एक्चुअली यहाँ पे गॉड को रिप्रेजेंट किया गया है दैट इट्स कमिंग फ्रॉम गॉड द लास्ट फिगर ऑफ स्पीच इन दिस सेंटेंस इज इंटरनल राइम ड्रिंक एंड ब्रिंक बोथ आर राइमिंग एंड यूज इन द सेम सेंटेंस so rhyming words used in the same sentence that is why internal rhyme and that's it these were the figure of speech for the poem number 4 a thing of beauty by john kids the figure of speech in this one are a little hard to identify if you cannot identify them just try to remember them so you may be able to attempt it if it comes in your examination and do not forget to like subscribe share and watch all the other explanation of the syllabus if you need any more explanation about any topic you can let me know all the links you will find in the description box and goodbye see you